Now let's examine Excel's norm.inf call. Okay, so the norm.inf calculates the x value, or percentile it's also called, required to give a certain area to the left of an x value. Okay, so again, Excel always works with the area to the left. Um, so if we put in this area, it's going to give us the x value such that the area to the left of that x value is whatever we've plugged in. If instead you want to work with the area to the right here, um, and you want the x value, then take 1 minus that area to then feed into Excel the area to the left, this blue area. So 1 minus this green area gives us this blue. That is what you plug into Excel's norm.inf call. And that again calculates the area um, in this case. So it gets you the x, or sorry, calculates the x value such that this is the area to the right of it, or if you will, 1 minus that is the area to the left of it, if that makes any sense. So let's jump into an example here, example number 2. Um, so we're back to the mean of 1010, a standard deviation of 20. So let's say we have a mean of 1010, standard deviation of 20. 85% of the data will be below what amount? So let's look and see what that would look like. So here's our 85%. We want that x value. Use the norm.inf, put in the 0.85 for our area here, 1010 and 20. Um, note, we don't do the comma 1 for cumulative. We don't need it when we're doing norm.inf. It's assuming we're working with the cumulative um, density function. Okay, and wanting the area to be that 85%. Um, and when we plug that into Excel, we get 1,030. Um, let's go try that in a minute. Uh, and also, let's say we wanted 15% of the data to be higher than what amount. Okay, so let's try that guy out too, and then we'll plug both of these into Excel. So let's say we wanted to know the x value such that 15% of the data is higher than that. Well, what do you notice about these two pictures? Okay, we're actually going to get the same x value here. Um, so actually 1 minus this area, this upper area here, this 0.15, actually gives us that 0.85. So guess what? We're going to get the same x value. But again, if we want the area, if we sorry, if we want the x value related to an area to the left, plug in that area norm.inf. If we want the x value related to an area to the right, do one minus that area within the norm.inf. Okay. And let's try this out in Excel. Okay, so here we are. Um, so if we want the x value um, so that set the area to the left is 0.85, we just plug in equals norm.inf. Put in the 0 0.85 for our probability or area. Grab the 1010, grab the 20. You do not need a comma 1 there, and if you want, you can lock these two references. You don't have to. Um, okay. And if we want the x value such that the area to the right is 0.15, well, we could realize it's just the same x value, or if you will, uh, we do norm.inf 1 minus the 0.15, comma, the 1010, comma, the 20. Again, you can lock those if you want, or not lock them in this case. We're not copying them down anywhere. Okay. Okay, so again, they both give 1030.73. Now, um, let's look at using norm.in for confidence intervals. Um, we have to be really careful of the area to the left and the right of um, for confidence intervals. Um, okay, so to build up a confidence interval, use the norm.inf yet again. Uh, be careful. The confidence interval is interval is the area in the middle. So let's have a look here. So this is our confidence level or a confidence interval. Uh, be so careful. That's the area in the middle here. Um, so if we want to uh, determine the lower and upper x values here, here are our formulas. Um, the x lower, or the x1 here, if you will, the area to the left of it is what we need to plug into the norm.inf. That is 1 minus the confidence level divided by 2. Now this guy, area to the left of it, will be this blue area right here, plus the whole confidence interval. So take what we found here, add to it the confidence level, uh, and that will give us our area to the left, or sorry, the area to the left of it. Good. So the area to the left, sorry, tiny typo note there. Um, so um, let's try this out with an example here. So example two continued. So let's say, again, um, we're trying to build up a confidence interval, but now we have a mean of 1010, standard deviation of 20. 
and we want to know 85% uh, or the 85% confidence interval, if you will, or 85% of the data will be between. Okay, so to get the area to the left of the x1, take 1 minus the 85% divided by 2. That turns out to be 0 0.075 or 7.5%, if you will. So 85% in the middle is going to leave us 15% to either or split between the two tails or 7.5% on each side. Um, okay, uh, plugging um, this into Excel, we would use the norm.inv call to get this x1. Uh, so we'd use norm.inv of the point 0 0.075, or if you will, you could do this whole calculation, just be careful, use brackets here. You could plug in either line here, um, and that'll turn out to be 981.21. We'll get that in Excel in a minute. Uh, and for the upper one here, um, again, you could um, do this whole calculation just as it is in um, the norm.inv call within it. Just be careful of your brackets. Or you could just go, okay, I know that that uh, area to the left of x2 here, this whole thing is 92.5%, so you could just plug that in instead. Okay, and that will actually give us 1,038.79. So let's go see about getting that in it. Okay, so 85% of the data are between what two values? So again, we're dealing with the same example here. Um, and um, so first of all, let's get our lower percent in Excel. So again, it would just be the 0, um, 1 minus the 0 0.85, divide that by 2. And the upper would just be that amount plus the 0.85. Um, and then to get our x1 here, just norm.inv this 0.75, grab the mean, grab the standard deviation. Okay, and to get x2, same idea. Now, because I didn't um, lock the lower reference, I can just copy this down. Um, so just grab the c13, the mean, the standard deviation, do the norm.inv, and that gives us our x2, which is 1038.